3.1 is saying let's state the principle of conservation of linear momentum that's pretty much easy and straightforward and then for 3.2 we're just supposed to calculate the boy's velocity immediately after he has thrown the iron rod and then the difficult question here is actually 3.3 where you really have to combine ideas of projectile motion and newton's second law so it says that a boy of mass 60 kg on roller skates hold an iron rod of mass 2 kg in his hands so up to so far we know that we have boy of mass 60 kgs and then we have our iron rod of mass 2 kgs and then it goes on to say that he is moving forward on a frictional less horizontal surface at a speed of 1.5 meter per second so let's say v equals to 1.5 meters per second and because the boy is holding the rod the rod has also a velocity of 1.5 meters per second and then in order to slow himself down he throws the iron rod horizontally away from himself in the forward direction at a speed of 4 meters per second so we're gonna have v after which is equals to 4 meters per second and then we are told to ignore the effects of all types of friction so this interaction is happening towards the forward direction so the first thing we can do for ourselves is to state that we take in uh, forward as positive right and then 3.1 says state in words the principle of conservation of linear momentum that says that the total linear momentum in an isolated system is conserved the total linear momentum in an isolated system it is conserved that is to actually say that the sum of momentum before is equal to the sum of the momentum after and then 3.2 says calculate the boy's velocity immediately immediately after he has thrown the iron rod so again uh, we see in that the sum before of the momentum is equal to the sum after so what is the momentum before the momentum before we have uh, the mass of the boy right uh, plus the mass of the iron rod moving at the same velocity and then the momentum after we have the mass of the boy the velocity of the boy plus the mass of the iron rod and the velocity of the iron rod so what is the mass of the boy and the iron rod that is is t plus 2 and the velocity is 1.5 which is equal to the mass of the boy, which is 60 kgs, multiplied by what we are looking for, the velocity of the boy, plus the mass of the iron rod, which is 2 kgs, multiplied by the velocity, which is 4, right? So now we have 62 multiplied by 1.5 minus 2 multiplied by 4. So I took this term to the left hand side right it's all equals to 60 multiplied by the velocity of the boy so the velocity of the boy is equal to 62 multiplied by 1.5 minus 2 multiplied by 4 everything divided by 60 and when i punch that in my calculator i'm getting 1.416 uh, recurring meters per second forward right because we took positive as forward or forward as positive and then that will be it for 3.2 and now the interesting one 3.3 3.3 says will the boy's speed under the following conditions be less than the same as or greater than the answer calculated in question 3.2 so 3.3.1 says he throws the iron rod forward but at a speed less than four meters per second so first of all let's connect speed acceleration force and force right so we know that uh, vf is equals to vi plus a delta t right so if you take the time as one second uh, which is like immediately after the boy 
has thrown the role, you will realize that our VF will just be VI plus the acceleration, right? Because we essentially multiply in by one, acceleration by one. Uh, but then if you take it a step forward, we have F, which is equals to M multiplied by A. And then if you write A in terms of F or make A the subject of the formula, you're going to get the acceleration, which is equals to the force divided by uh, the mass. So VF is equals to VI plus F divided by M. So for 3.3.1, it is saying that he's throwing uh, the rod forward, but at a speed of less than 4 meters per second. So here's our boy here, and then this is our rod, right? So when the boy applies a force at the on the rod, is basically applying an acceleration on the rod right and the rod also applies an acceleration on the boy right but in the opposite direction so the harder the boys uh, applies an acceleration on the rod the harder the boy or the more the boy speed is gonna decrease because it will decelerate right so if uh here yeah, like they're saying he throws the rod at a speed less than four meters per second then he will decelerate less than when he throws it at four meters per second so his speed will be greater than because now he is not uh, decelerating as much right and then for 3.3.2 it says he throws the iron rod vertically upwards at a speed of four meters per second so if the boy throws the rod upwards right the rod as a result will apply a force on the boy uh, downwards right so because the force is downwards it won't have any effect to his velocity forward what will happen instead is that because now he has lost the iron rod he will be able to push himself faster than before he lost it right so his velocity after will be greater than his velocity before if the velocity after is greater than the velocity before then that tells us that that velocity after will also be greater than the velocity we calculated in 3.2